There are a lot of big transit systems out there, but one in particular whose grand scale, incredible service, and unmatched impact stands above the rest for me. The system that introduced me to epic transit, if you will. A system that showed how major investments in the heart of a city could lead to incredible transit across it and the wider region, bringing people together from the suburbs to the city center. That system is the Paris RER, and today I'm excited to tell you all why it's probably the quintessential mass transit system. The RER is the backbone of the Paris and the Greater Ile de France region, and moves millions of people every day, linking the suburbs with the city with some of the busiest rail lines outside of Asia. And it was built on significant planning, engineering, and train design innovations that's given it great influence even 50 years later. So let's talk RER. Before we get into the RER network, we need to talk about Paris and the other networks it interacts with. I've already talked about the famous Paris metro system in a previous explainer that came out earlier this year, and a refreshed version of the Paris trams explainer to discuss the city's neighborhood rail transportation will come out in 2023, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. Now, when discussing the RER, what's interesting is how drastically the scope of the area you're looking at changes from the metro. While much of the metro system is within the Peripherique Ring Road that encompasses central Paris, the RER is quite a bit less limited, as its name, the Réseau Express Régional or Regional Express Network, suggests. The center point of Paris from the perspective of the RER is châtelet Léal, a mega-station complex directly east of the Louvre Museum with five different metro services that stretches over half a kilometer north from the River Seine, which runs through the center of Paris. Roughly 8 kilometers northwest of Châtelet, beyond the Arc de Triomphe, is La Défense, Paris's modern business district that is both a major destination and transport hub. In the south of Paris is Massy, where you can get TGV high-speed trains to the southwest of France, as well as flights from nearby Orly Airport. To the north of the city is the much larger Charles de Gaulle Airport, Paris's international hub where you can get both international flights and high-speed trains, including some into Belgium and the Netherlands that you can learn about in a previous video. To the southeast of Charles de Gaulle is marne la vallee a new town development that's home to major shopping and leisure destinations such as Disneyland Paris, and is also served by high-speed trains. Speaking of major recreational attractions, the Stade de France, one of the largest stadiums in Europe, is located just north of the city center here. To the southwest of the city is Versailles, famous for the palace of the same name. Now, within Paris itself, five of the six major rail terminals are very important to the RER network, with only Gare Montparnasse remaining disconnected from the rail network. These are Gare du Nord and Gare de l'Est, which effectively act as one station, as well as Gare de Lyon, Gare Saint-Lazare, and Gare d'Austerlitz, all key points on the network, and they're important particularly because they serve as transfer points and termini for the various suburban rail services that do not run through Paris, known as the Transilienne. These services are operated by the French national carrier SNCF and are tightly integrated with RER services. And of course, these stations are also often the location where RER trains dive from the surface underground into their famous city center tunnels. Now beyond the obvious bombastic scale and impressive ridership, you might be wondering what makes the RER so special. Well, for one, it has enabled much more service from the suburbs into the city than would be otherwise possible making numerous different journeys much more attractive on public transportation and serving that incredible ridership. Given Paris's history of a central city isolated from the suburbs, the RER has allowed for a level of social and cultural integration that has turned Paris from a strong city into a strong region, completely reshaping its geography. The RER is also critical for enabling connections across the city. Even in many cities with impressive metro networks, and that includes Paris before the establishment of the RER, the speeds offered by a traditional metro and the scale of a city with more than 10 million people can be punishing for getting around, even though mobility may be widely available. With the RER and its speeds up to double that of traditional metros, trips passing through the center of the city can be made quickly and conveniently. The system also has the benefit of serving high demand trips within central Paris with rapid trains, relieving congestion on the metro for local trips, thus serving the dual purpose of a regional network and an express metro. The service is also important, because as with so many cities, Paris's main intercity train services and flights depart from various locations within the city, and the RER has opened up new places for connections to long-distance travel, connecting most of the major long-distance transport hubs quickly, including to TGV services east of central Paris, at Charles de Gaulle Airport, and marne la vallee 
That means that new low-cost services can run from these more isolated locations while still having convenient connections to the city center. For me, another element that makes the RER so significant is the history it's tied up with. The RER was mostly built during a period of significant change for Paris, with La Défense growing, the station was actually built before much of the development in the area, and under the famous Grand Arch. There's also the well-known connections to Charles de Gaulle Airport and Euro Disney, which also came around about the same time as the Euro Tunnel. These epic engineering and construction projects, from cavernous underground stations to modern elevated guideways, really feel ahead of their time. Remember, the RER infrastructure, unlike say the subways of Tokyo, needed to accommodate really large mainline-style trains, rather than smaller metro-style trains that run out onto mainlines. All in all, so many major transformative transportation and urban projects happening during one period has really left a mark that's nice to look back on. Now, before we get into the lines of this system, if you're new here, consider supporting the channel via Patreon or YouTube memberships, and following on Twitter, Instagram, and Substack, where I write weekly articles. It helps me bring you more transport videos every week. So, how did the RER actually come about, and what does the network look like? The original intention for the system that became the RER was to provide express service compared to the rather winding and frequently stopping Paris Metro. And these ideas were something that started popping up as early as the 1930s, when infrastructure and right-of-ways for a future project was already starting to be acquired. Things really got started though with a big gradual build-out of the initial tunneled sections that form the core of RER A, B, and D. And most notably, the centerpiece of the network, chatelet Léal Station, built to enable full services from all three lines, even when the network opened with mostly just RER A and a portion of RER B. The central section of RERA was not built all at once and opened in phases, with trains getting closer and closer to the center, starting in the late 1960s with through running starting in the late 1970s. Nowadays, RERA is the busiest RER line by a wide margin, carrying well north of a million riders on its busiest days. This perhaps isn't so surprising given its role as an express service and relief valve for the metro's busiest line, Line 1, along the historic axis from La Défense to Aubert where a connection can be made to Gare Saint-Lazare, further to Gare de Lyon, and then east to the busy hub of Nashon. RERA's busyness makes it the most used outside of Asia, quite a feat, and it's almost always very crowded. The line is also fairly distinct, even from the other RER lines, in just how express it is. This is thanks to a well-designed and very expensive greenfields alignment through central Paris that permits high speeds and has a wide station spacing with epic underground stations that remain some of the most impressive pieces of rail infrastructure ever constructed. Line A runs out onto two branches in the south and the east, with one terminating at Disneyland Paris, where connections to high-speed rail can be made, and another three branches traveling to the northwest beyond La Défense. These numerous branches bring the line's total length to roughly 110 kilometers, with 46 stations. Next up is the RERB. This line was originally dead-ended in central Paris at chatelet Léal, having it only run to the south along the suburban rail lines it was converted from. However, this didn't last long, as in the early 1980s, a new tunnel north from Châtelet was constructed to Gare du Nord, which enabled the progressive extension of RERB north with service to the Stade de France and then east with two branches, one of which terminates at Charles de Gaulle Airport, allowing connections to flights but also some high-speed rail services. And, as it turns out, the RERB also connects to Orly Airport via the Orly Val system, as well as to high-speed rail in Massey. This has led to the experience of taking the RERB often being people's first and last experience on a trip to Paris. The RERB gets slightly less ridership than RERA right now, although it's projected to overtake it soon as Europe's busiest rail line, with over 47 stations on 80 kilometers of track. Now, the A and B lines in particular were complex to build because they involved taking portions of SNCF's national railway network and commingling them with new tunnels created by the RATP, the Paris Metro operator. And this meant a voltage switch from 25 kV AC to 1500 volts DC was also involved, which actually necessitated the creation of new types of rolling stock prefixed with MI for material interconnection, enabling dual voltage operation that was much less common at the time. Prior to having this equipment, cross-platform transfers were sometimes needed for onward journeys. As it turns out, RER A and B are still largely run by the RITP, which means that they get treated a bit differently than the other lines. And on line A, drivers still switch for part of the route based on the territory being operated over, something which no longer happens on RER B, and used to happen on a lot of rail lines in places where different companies operated different parts of the line. 
Besides line A and B, the other lines are all operated entirely by SNCF. RERC was actually brought into service shortly after RERA opened, and was created quite quickly with a short tunnel section between existing suburban rail segments that were bunched up to form the line, which can look very confusing, so here's how it works. Lines were brought together from the north and south with some improvement work and a short connector tunnel between the stub end terminal of Gare d'Orsay and Invalides, and they wind to the northwest and southwest with three branches on each side. However, there is an additional southern branch that cuts to the northwest from the southern leg to form a giant loop. Beyond the confusing overall structure, the line's curvaceous nature and numerous stops make it much less rapid than other lines on the system, especially for the type of cross-regional trips typical on the RER. Now, unfortunately, Line C has a misconnection with Line A where the lines cross, but do not connect. Fortunately, Line C does connect to the RERB both at Massey, where high-speed trains also stop, and at Saint-Michel-Notre-Dame in central Paris. Ridership on Line C is similar to Line B, with around half a million people using this service every day, and the line has a total length of 185 kilometers with 84 stations. Line D came in the late 1980s, from the north into Châtelet, but it wasn't until the 90s when a new tunnel continuing south to Gare de Lyon and beyond was constructed to relieve RERA that it became a true through running RER line. Unfortunately though, the independent tunnels that were built parallel to the RERA headed to Gare de Lyon do not exist to the north, and so tunnels between Gare du Nord and Châtelet les Halles are shared between the RERB and D, limiting their frequency to every 3 and 5 minutes respectively, and leading to frequent delays especially on the lower priority line D. To the north of Gare du Nord, after serving the Stade de France from the west, Line D travels out to the suburbs as a single branch, while in the south the line has three, including two that connect to the RERC at Juvisy. Overall, Line D is nearly 190 kilometers long with 59 stations, the longest in the system, with its furthest extents to the north and south traveling over 60 kilometers from central Paris. Unfortunately though, this means a lack of fare integration at the outer reaches of the line where the Paris Navigo card isn't usable. The line sees similar ridership to RERB and C. Now, with the D on the map, we have the central part of the network at Châtelet as it is today, with two tunnels to the north and south for RER A and B, and two tunnels to the south for RER D, with four large island platforms. The outer platforms provide an excellent cross-platform interchange between RER A and B, enabling combination trips between the two to be made seamlessly while the inner two islands are dedicated to RERD, benefiting from the extra track capacity entering the congested tunnel with Line B. Châtelet Léal is a weird station. The design is epic in scale and it's close to perfection for the RER, but the adjacent tunnels feel overbuilt for operating a two-line service to the station, but underbuilt for the current three-line service. The most recent expansion of the RER network came at the turn of the millennium in 1999, when the RERE opened along with a new tunnel from the approach tracks for Gare de l'Est, featuring a new underground station called Magenta in between it and Gare du Nord, and a terminal right at saint Lazare station known as Hosman saint Lazare. finally properly connecting the major hub to the RER network. Both stations are deep underground and feature two island platforms with tracks on both sides marking a return to the bold, high-quality new tunneled corridors that we've seen from the RERA. From Gare de l'Est, trains naturally run to the east, making the RERE a total of 52 kilometers long with 22 stations, and the only line that currently dead ends in the city center, also contributing to it being the lowest ridership line of the bunch. Interestingly, Line E is entirely AC electrified, including in the tunnels, unlike all of the other RER lines. Now, with all of these lines, you're probably wondering what the service is like, and well, that's complicated. Even more so than with something like the Elizabeth Line in London, there are a ton of different service patterns operated, including some that run express on the more spacious suburban rail infrastructure, and some that run more frequently than others. The helpful and unsurprising rule of thumb is that the closer you get to the center, the higher frequency of RER services, as the various branches combine. But fortunately, thanks to the various Transilien services that often share corridors with the suburban RER branches, you almost always have lots of options. Probably the most important thing is that since the RER lines generally all have fairly long central sections before any branches occur on either side, you can rely on these sections as an all-stop express metro service with a high base frequency of the train every few minutes. And for many trips, you really don't need to pay attention to the train's final destination. You can use it like any metro line. Before we close out, I do think it's important to once again highlight the differences between the various lines on the RER. 
from the A with its high quality dedicated tunnel to the C with its winding and station packed route. Each line is quite different, and the system is far from a monoculture. I'll link a great article from Alan Levy in the description that talks about this in greater detail. The RER is clearly a large network, but what makes it so unique? For one, the system is famous for its gigantic stations. I've already talked about Chatelet, but Nashon, Aubert, and Charles de Gaulle et Trois, as well as La Défense, are also enormous. Remember, each has over 200 meter long platforms, and the first three were built underground under established parts of Paris, as giant open voids with structures filling them up, similar to the design trend I referenced in a recent video on Barcelona Line 9. I think Nashon is my favorite overall, with its giant arched roof and electrification gantries hanging down. Now, speaking of electrification infrastructure, the RER network also developed in direct connection with new rolling stock on lines A and B to provide enhanced interconnected services across multiple differently electrified rail corridors, which is really cool. The RER, and line A in particular, was also the birthplace of the SASM signaling system, an advanced form of automatic train protection that was created to aid drivers in operating at extremely high frequency service on RER A safely and was subsequently installed on the Santiago Metro, the Mexico City Metro, Shanghai Metro, and the Hong Kong MTR. Over the years, the system has been further developed and now features automatic train operation. Something I also really appreciate that might seem quite subtle is the wayfinding of the RER. Unlike on most German S-Bahn systems, the RER seems far more oriented towards urban rather than suburban trips in its wayfinding as the central trunk gets a single letter, unlike in Germany where each suburban service gets its own numbered designator. Basically, the RER is special because not only did it sort of invent a new mode of express rail transit, but in many cases it also invented the underlying technology and tested the limits of engineering to support it. This innovation has not always been the most positive though. While the MI-09 and MI-2N trains primarily used on the RERA are really cool because they are the only bi-level EMUs I'm aware of that have three large doors on each side of each carriage, they should probably be single level, as the RERA is pressed for capacity and the bi-level trains with so many doors end up being mostly stairs. This is interesting because the current trains used on RERB, which are 8 cars rather than the 10 cars used on the RERA, are single level. The trains used on the various SNCF operated lines feature a blend of rolling stock, including some from the Transilien, and the standard rolling stock is usually a bi-level EMU, with two sets of doors on each side of each car. However, in recent years, the Regio 2 N sets, a hybrid single and bi-level train design with single-level boarding cars and bi-level seating cars, and the Z50000 trains featuring many small cars with single doors that remind me of Stockholm Suburban Rail have also been used on the RER. One unfortunate feature of the RER, particularly in the central tunneled sections, is poor air quality. Bad air is a common feature of urban rail systems, but the combination of the rapid acceleration and deceleration of large trains into fairly deep underground stations seems to lead to particularly high levels of pollution in the RER. Fortunately, air quality is monitored closely, and more modern, better ventilated parts of the network face less issues. There should also be better air quality inside more modern trains and in stations with less heavy use of friction brakes. A fun fact to balance that out is that Line 14 of the Paris Metro was in large part built to relieve RERA, which itself became highly congested trying to relieve Paris Metro Line 1. So perhaps all of Paris's rail network is really just focused around trying to relieve a single metro line. Because of this, and the influence of the RER that in turn influenced Line 14, the line uses both much larger trains than the other metro lines in the system, with stations spaced widely to enable faster service and long enough to accommodate 8 car trains as opposed to the usual 5. Line 14 also used modern signaling to enable driverless trains for the first time on the Paris Metro, as well as platform screen doors. Now, speaking of screen doors, the RER sadly does not have them but Crossrail or the Elizabeth Line does, and I think to appreciate the RER, it's helpful to consider that Paris was able to pull off a similar project to the Elizabeth Line roughly 40 to 50 years before London, and with bigger trains and stations to boot. It really goes to show how influential the RER was, and perhaps some of the design features like the tube stations and platform screen doors seen on Crossrail will make it to future RER projects because, yeah, there are plans. The first major project is already happening right now, and it's incredibly exciting. The RERE is being extended west to La Défense and beyond. 
from which it will probably take over one of the RERA branches, as well as further extend along tracks currently only used by Transalien J service trains. An intermediate station will also be built to connect the RERC and E, which are currently not connected. The addition of a new suburban segment to the RER is not really something new, and I'd argue that's part of the benefit of the model. Since the expensive infrastructure is concentrated in the city center, new stations and corridors can be added in the suburbs and simply plug into it. And you'll see that that's actually happened quite a lot through the system's history. Not only will this meet another through-running RER service through an entirely modern tunnel, but it will also mean more service on the RERE and the remaining RERA branches as well as a reduction in congestion at chatelet Léal, as riders can instead switch between services from Paris's east and west at La Défense and Gare du Nord, essentially taking the current, highly centralized transfer design of the RER network at Châtelet and changing it to a triangle transfer model with three main transfer points for the RER B, D, A, and E. Along with these new tunnels will come new trains. The RERNG, a standardized model that will be deployed to the RERE and D in the next few years, is already being tested. It's got an attractive design with the sky blue livery now seen on transit across Paris, as well as a mix of single and double deck carriages just like the Regio 2N. A few years further in the future, the MING, a new train model meant to replace the aging stock on the RERB, will also start to be ruled out. This model will be similar to the RERNG, but with a slightly different design, and short alternating double and single deck cars with Jacob's bogies, like a cross of the Copenhagen STOG trains and the RERNG allowing for smaller platform gaps and hopefully more capacity. There are also more aspirational plans for the system. A new set of tunnels has long been discussed north from Châtelet to free up more capacity for RERD and B services. While this is likely to be delayed thanks to the implementation of a more modern signaling system on the RER called Nextio, issues with it may bring the new tunnels back onto the table. At the same time, there's always the possibility, given the high demand for public transit in Paris, that a new RER service could be created, a natural corridor being between Saint-Lazare and Gare Montparnasse, potentially better uniting the Aubert saint lazare complex while also adding the last major terminus to the RER network. There has also been some high-level discussion recently from the President of France on the idea of RER networks in other French cities. This is a really exciting idea and could transform France as a whole, and it sort of reminds me of Germany with its many S-Bahn systems across many cities. Indeed, smaller RER systems that might just consist of single tunnels in many cases could be a great way to integrate other city regions and get a lot of transit for a reasonable amount of money. So with that we have the RER, and maybe some more RERs too. Given the ridership and the scale of the engineering and ingenuity, the RER stands tall as one of the greatest public transport and city building projects ever undertaken. And I am so happy to end 2022 and finally cover it in a dedicated video. Thanks for watching.